Um, so first of all, I'd, I'd like to call all of our candidates back up to the stage so we can take a few photos and then we'll get started with some questions. So as far as question and answer, I'll ask that people uh, raise their hand from the floor. Uh, I'll take the questions. I'll repeat them so that everyone can hear and then we'll allow each candidate up to a two minute response. And I do ask that uh, you address your questions to all candidates, not simply to Want one to candidate. Get in more. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> was about the pension regime so if the current government brings in a pension regime uh, what is the a conservative government going to do about that so if we proceed in the same order as which we spoke uh, we'll start with Lisa over that uh, great question uh, I don't call it a pension plan I call it a job killing tax and it's a payroll tax and as progressive conservatives I think that we have made a record, at least uh, Christine, myself, Vic, and, uh, and Monty, fighting uh, tax increases in the legislature. Patrick's been part of a government that has kept taxes lower for Canadians, and I think that we need to ensure that as progressive conservatives moving forward, we have reasonable taxes, not high taxes, and this Liberal government has already brought in the single largest sales tax increase in Ontario's history with the HST, and the single largest income tax history in, in the Ontario's history with the health tax. So as we move forward as progressive conservatives, I think most on this stage would say this, we recognize that the grassroots of our party and our membership expect that they're going to be part of uh, the policy making decisions in this party and I would say as your next leader we would work together at our next policy conference to talk about how to keep taxes reasonable in Ontario while we can continue to uh, support our core value public services like health care and education and at the same time grow our economy because again just like the health tax, which wasn't intended to go to health care at all, it was intended to go to, ro to, to general revenue, this is a job-killing tax that will do the same thing. And people will not arrive at any of those benefits for many years down the road, if at all. So to answer your question, very long answer to a very short question is this. As your leader, I will make sure that we work with the party apparatus and our policy advisory committee to come up with an alternative uh, to helping Ontarians save their money. But I believe, as a progressive conservative, the best person to save for a person's retirement is the individual themselves. Thank you. That's a great question. Look, this Ontario Registered Pension Plan is nothing but a pension tax, and that's what we call it in our literature. Quite frankly, I don't believe she's going to go ahead with it. I think this is purely a, a Justin Trudeau ploy and a play. Uh, the Ontario Chamber of Commerce says that 87% of their members are against this job-killing tax. 
uh, and 53% of their members will fire somebody to pay for it. So I was in London the other day and I met a guy who owns a company with 15 employees. And he said, yep, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've got 15 people, I'm going to fire one, use that money to pay my share of the other 14 people's uh, tax, and then I'm going to make them work harder. That's, that's the anecdotal truth of exactly what's going to happen here. Now already, not only do we have the highest energy rates in all of North America, but we already today have the highest payroll taxes in the entire country. These are the job-killing efforts of Dalton McGinty and Kathleen Wynne, which is why we have 600,000 people unemployed today and 300,000 who used to be in manufacturing. We have the high cost regime in Ontario. Think about Kellogg's, Caterpillar, Heinz. I mean, they still make cereal, they still make earth moving equipment, they still make, uh, they still make ketchup. They just don't make these in Ontario anymore because we have a high cost regime. So I look at our, conserv our progressive conservative values that say taxes kill jobs. So anything that goes to increase the tax is exactly what we're going to be first fighting against, voting against, and you're going to find in, in our uh, government that we'll be lowering taxes because we know that lower taxes create jobs. So I hope that helps you. Great, uh, excellent question. As the other two have said, uh, I think we actually have to stop this uh, tax dead in its tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't start until uh, the proposal is 2017, 2018. Uh, the only, uh, uh, the finance ministry has told the premier that this is going to cost Ontario uh, businesses and Ontario uh, people 150,000 jobs in the private sector. So uh, this, uh, this leader, Kathleen Wynne, actually uh, campaigned essentially on, on firing 150,000 people in the private sector. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't get uh, any play in the last election. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know how serious this tax is, as a small business owner with 65 employees, uh, this is uh, deadly for a lot of uh, companies. So if an employee makes $45,000 a year, it's going to cost the employee $788 it's going to cost the employer seven hundred eighty thousand, or sorry, seven hundred eighty-eight dollars. So you know uh, how much money that's going to take out of the economy, and uh, we have to continue as a caucus to fight this a tooth and nail to rally the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, uh, all employers, and and get families involved in this to uh, fight the Kathleen Wynne Liberals uh, from imposing this tax in 2017-2018. Thanks. Certainly, I don't think we're going to see any disagreement amongst leadership candidates on this policy. And I, I'd add to what uh, Lisa said, uh, uh, certainly about the federal government you know, being proud to keep taxes down. But actually, our finance minister, Joe Oliver, when this came out, actually took the unusual step of speaking to all the media and saying that this would hurt Ontario's economy. So the federal government spoke very clearly that this pension tax was disastrous. You know, how do you get new jobs to Ontario um, with a culture like that? You know, I was at a um, nature farms in Leamington. Uh, they have a payroll of $19 million two weeks ago, uh, and he said they're going to do an expansion. But they're going to do their expansion in Michigan. He's going to double the size of their plant. Those are high-tech agricultural jobs, well-paying jobs. And he said, with hydro prices and now with this proposed pension tax, it does not make sense for him to do his investment in Ontario. And I hear a story like that, it, it, it breaks your heart, because that's an area where we need jobs. We need jobs all over Ontario, and the policies of this government are reckless. So, you know, this, this is a flawed policy, and obviously the pension tax is not in the best interest of Ontario, but I think as Conservatives we need to make sure we champion at Queen's Park how all these policies are hurting Ontario together, because it's not just this, it is, you know, it is one after another, and so uh, I would certainly uh, be honoured to work with these uh, uh, th these colleagues about uh, battling this as aggressively as possible at Queen's Park and to convince them that it's not in our, in our country's or our province's interest. Well, I, I think it's pretty clear we are all aligned on this issue that this uh, proposed pension plan is nothing more than a, a job-killing payroll tax. And uh, certainly uh, the federal government and their ideas coming forward, recognizing that we do need enhancements, CPP enhancements, but the economy is still too fragile to move forward with it, makes a lot of sense. And that was 
that would be what I would continue to advocate. Uh, there is plenty of anecdotal evidence, I've heard that in my own writing of Whitby Oshawa and in speaking to business owners across the province that what will happen is, is just as has been suggested that people will actually end up having to lay off people, it will result in a higher unemployment rate and will end up with people without work and, uh, and pension contributions that people are going to struggle to be able to make themselves. So I think that the, the, the good news is I agree uh, with Vic that it's unlikely that they're going to proceed with it. I think it really is a sort of a wedge issue that they're trying to jostle with the federal government on this. Uh, but it is not supposed to come forward until 2017. They haven't really come forward with anything substantive yet. We're going to be looking at that and we're going to be using every tool at our disposal to delay it so that we have a chance in 2018 to stop it dead in its tracks and we'll do everything that we can to do that because we know that's bad for our business in Ontario. It's bad for economy and it's ultimately bad for all of us. So I think we're, we're going to do whatever we can to make sure it doesn't happen. Next question. Uh, yes, ma'am. You've all uh, alluded to a small group of decision makers that are uh, letting policies be put in place without you being aware of them. That this has, has so the question is about decision making in the party and we've, we've heard a lot about uh, decision make decisions being made in Toronto by a small number of people and what are the candidates going to do about that to do things differently so I'll flip the order around this time so we'll lead off with Chris <laughs> <laughs> wow well, that's great. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a great question and it is something that you're entitled to know about. Uh, it's fair to say that in the last several campaigns, uh, we have not had involvement as caucus members in decision making, nor have you as members. I think that's pretty clear. And what has ended up happening is that decisions have been made by a small group of people. I can tell you that um, we don't even know exactly everyone that was on the campaign team last time. Typically in the past, We've had caucus members on the campaign team, but we didn't this time around. So when you heard about the 100,000 job cuts, that's about the same time that we heard about it too. So that can't continue, that's not right. Uh, we need to make sure that our, our party is open and accessible to everyone. There's lots of ideas about how you can do that. And I, I don't want to say any, if anything in absolute terms because I want to work with all of you to develop that process. But I would say two things. One thing is you need to have regular contact with the leader. And it's not just at $500 a plate fundraisers. Everybody makes their contribution to the party. It may not be in monetary terms. It may be in terms of time and talent. So we need to make sure that there's regular contact, regular meetings with the leader in various